Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here, and today I'm excited to be coming at you with this new review. Today we are reviewing the Wacom Cintiq 22. So recently I set up a new workstation here and a new work area, set up a new desk. I'm gonna be sharing the entire station with you guys in a future video. But today we are focusing on reviewing the Cintiq 22, which is one of the tools that is part of this overall station. Now, I went with the 22 for a variety of different reasons. And we'll get into those reasons as we go further in the review. One of the main reasons though is because of the size. It's really the perfect size for the setup that I have now. So I did consider the 24, but in the end I settled on the 22. And I have to tell you guys up front, I'm really happy with that decision. It's wound up being a really great tool. Now, of course, the other main reason I wanted to add this antique was for having a larger drawing experience. To add that to the portable drawing experience that I already have, as you guys know, which is the iPad Pro. So this isn't replacing anything. This is just an added tool to the overall setup. So I've been taking you around the design of the 22, and I actually really enjoy the design of it. As you can see, we have a minimalistic design here. And when it comes to the cable management, I find that to be very streamlined. We only have three wires here and we don't have a rat's nest of cables to set this machine up. Three wires, so it's nice and streamlined and they don't get in your way when you're working. Now, another big feature of the design is the stand. Now, this stand is included with the Cintiq 22 and it is attached to the machine out of the box. When I was looking at photos of this, I didn't think this stand was going to be as good as it is but it's actually quite ergonomic. It's easy to work with and I enjoy it a lot. One of my favorite features of the stand is it offers the ability to have the Cintiq kind of float off the desk and into your lap. And that works at a variety of angles as well. And it's kind of like the experience you would get with the Ergo stand, but just not as versatile. When we start drawing in a little bit, I'll show you what I mean. Now we're gonna talk about pen design, and to do that, I have my assistant brought in here. So we're reviewing the machine with two different pens. We're using the Pro Pen Slim, and we're also using the standard pen, the thicker one that comes with the machine. Grogu here is holding the Slim Pen, and that should give you a good idea on just how slim it actually is. Now, when I got the Slim Pen, I thought I would prefer it a lot more over the thicker pen because I'm used to using the Apple Pencil now and it's very similar in thickness to the Apple Pencil. However, I actually really enjoy both designs. I don't prefer one over the other. I'm actually using both of them for the different feels that they give. and that impact and change that it makes is noticeable and it's noticeable just through the design of each alone. In other words, these are the exact same pen technologies, exact same pressure levels, but they have a completely different feel when you work with them and that's simply based on the design alone. So I enjoy both, I'm using both, and we're gonna go into those differences when we start drawing we're gonna use each one for a couple different things. We are also going to be comparing three different controller experiences here. The Wacom Express Key Remote, the Surface Dial, and the Clip Studio Tab Mate. Now the Wacom Express Key Remote is of a nice design. It's made of metal. It feels substantial in the hand, but it's not too heavy. It has nice tactile feel on the buttons, and you have a lot of customization in the driver with this. The only thing that I don't love about it is it connects through a USB receiver, a standard USB receiver. It's not Bluetooth. So on a whim, I decided to check and see if the Surface Dial actually works with this experience. And to my surprise, it actually works perfectly. The wheel settings are built into Windows from the system level. The Surface Dial is of high quality design. It's metal, it has a substantial feel, and it has some great functionality that I'll show you as we go further. And then we have the Clip Studio Tab Mate. 
Now, the Tabmate is of plastic design, but it's really ergonomic in hand. It fits in the hand well. And unlike the Express Key remote, it works through Bluetooth. So let's get into comparing each of these controller experiences. And we'll start with the Tabmate because that's what I have in my hand right now. That's what I'm using to get the shot here so I'm not in your way. It's allowing me to stand up and draw easily and still control various aspects of the user interface. Now, both the Express Key Remote and the Tabmate have really deep settings that we're not going to be able to get into in this review. They have deep customization. Now, the advantage of the Express Key Remote is of course that it's a universal controller, meaning because of Wacom's driver, it's going to be able to work in pretty much any software you want it to work in. Now, here I have the Express Key Remote picked up and as you can see, the rubber back of the remote allows it to be positioned on the Cintiq so you don't have to constantly hold it in your hand. That is a positive here. And with the Tabmate, you're not able to do that. It has to be held in hand at all times in order for it to work. Now, one of the benefits of the dial is it can also stick on the screen of the Cintiq. It sticks on very solid. It doesn't move even at more steep angles. If you guys remember in the Surface Studio review, the dial would kind of slide off the screen and it doesn't do that here when you're using the dial with the Cintiq. So this is an awesome thing. You can use it uh, on the side of the screen like I'm showing you here, or you can place it on your desk. So it has that versatility. Now, what I love about the dial is how natural it feels with the spinning fluidity and the versatility of this and the fluidity of it. And it's awesome for rotate, for zoom, awesome for quickly changing your brush size when you're painting or inking or whatever you may be doing. So I really love the streamlines of workflow that the dial creates here with the Cintiq. So there's something that just feels right about using the dial for creation, something that just feels really natural that I enjoy a lot. You can also plug in custom settings to the dial as well, so it can go pretty deep with its functionality. And then when you have softwares that are set up for it, you get the functions like what I'm showing you here. Now, as you can see, I have the Cintiq floating off the desk a bit. And if I was sitting down and in my chair, this would be floating more toward my lap. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier when it comes to the versatility of the included stand. It adds to the overall ergonomics, being able to do this and then go back to having it fully on the desk. So it's really nice to work with for what it is. So really quick, let's get into a little bit of the specs here. We have a 1080p screen and it's not laminated. Now I thought this was going to bother me a lot more than it actually does. In fact, it really doesn't bother me at all because the screen has great color representation and with a little bit of tweaking, I just did a little bit of custom tweaking to the colors uh, when it comes to calibration. It looks excellent. Colors pop great. And when it comes to the resolution, that also doesn't look bad at all. And I love the performance of it. I also love that it's silent. It doesn't require a fan. So there are benefits to that. Now, being that it's not laminated, that means there's an air gap. However, it's really not that bad. And when you're actually in front of the screen and working on it, you really don't notice it. It kind of fades to the background. So. Do I wish the screen was QHD? Yes. Do I wish it was laminated? Yes. But neither of these things take away or set back the experience, which segues us into the pen because that's really what it's all about here. And that is the main reason I chose the 22 over an alternative. In my past tests of the Pro Pen 2, I found it to be one of the very best pen technologies out there. And that is still the case today. The pen is just fantastic. It's extremely natural. We have 8,000 levels of pressure, beautiful tilt, and a beautiful feel on screen with the etched glass. So that's another big reason why I went with the 22 and why I thought it was still worth it despite 
having some of the lower specs it has. So in my opinion, the Pro Pen 2 is up there with the Apple Pencil being one of the best of the best. So when it comes to this drawing experience, it's just all the way excellent. There's no parallax. We're getting precision on the tip. Pressure feels great. And it's just all around an excellent drawing experience. Here, we're rendering this ball with the included pen, the thicker pen, which has a great feel in hand, ergonomic placement on the buttons, and the wide barrel. And I like how that wide barrel gives you a lot of control. Now, when we bring the slim pen in, what I enjoy most about it is the utensil feel that it has and also the ability to maneuver it in a very streamlined way because it's light, it's thin, you can hold it from multiple angles very easily. And that's one of the things I enjoy most about the Slim Pen. So sketching with both is really a pleasure and they both give you a great experience. They just give you two different feels in hand. And the same holds true for painting as well. And it's even better with the combination of the etched glass that Wacom has designed here for the Cintiq line, giving it a very natural feel on screen. It really feels like paper. It feels like canvas. It feels like the real thing. When you combine that with the pressure levels and how natural the technology of the pen is, it makes for an excellent drawing and painting experience. So this is just a quick on the spot render from mind, but I think it's a good way to show you guys the versatility of the pen and the dynamics of the pen. When I'm going in with my custom paintbrush here, you can see how it's responding to the blending and responding to how this brush is designed. And that is brought forth by the dynamics that the pen offers. And remember that you have really deep settings for tweaking your pressure within the driver. And this allows you to really get any feel that you would like with this pen technology. Now we are going to get into inking and we are going to do the standard powdered Toastman ink test. And to do this, we are going to be using my real ink index for Clip Studio Paint. We're gonna be doing a varied pressure inking so we can really test the quality and fidelity of the pressure of the Pro Pen 2 on the Cintiq 22. So let's get into inking powdered Toastman. One of my favorite characters, by the way. So as we lay our lines down, you can start to see the fidelity we are getting when it comes to the pressure intake. Pretty much all the things I said about the pen technology in the Intuos Pro review from a couple of years ago still applies here. The Pro Pen 2 is really ahead of its time and it has held up over time really well. It still just feels excellent. Here we are inking with the Slim Pen and I really dig how this feels because it reminds me of a sable brush with the thin body design. So now we're going to take in the standard pen and we're gonna do a little bit of inking with the standard pen. Now what I really enjoy about the standard pen for inking or for working with it in general for that matter I enjoy the tapered design and I enjoy how the larger barrel gives you such great control when you're working with the pen, especially if you float your hand like I do. Now, I'm not saying the Slim Pen doesn't have great control because it does. I'm not saying one has more control over the other. The areas of focus for control, I think, are in different places on each of these pens. For example, on the standard pen, I would say the center of focus is on that taper design and the barrel. And that is where the control comes from. And with the slim pen, the control comes from its weight and thinness and being able to maneuver it in a variety of ways in a quick manner for tilting and things like that. Like I said earlier, I thoroughly enjoy both of them. And I think you guys can relate to this I know this is what happens to me. One day I'll wake up, I'll go to work and I have one particular feel. And then the next day my feel is totally off and it's different. So I like to switch it up. That's why I like to have a variety of different tools to work with. And having the two pens benefits my workflow for that reason. 
And the last thing I want to quickly touch on is using the Cintiq 22 for 3D work and sculpting. This is an area that this tool excels at. And that's because you have so much depth within the driver and you have so much control. And most of these 3D softwares are specifically set up for Wacom's technology. All the pen pressure attributes come through when you're sculpting. So it's giving you a really beautiful sculpting experience when it comes to pen. And then when you combine something like the Express Key Remote and your pen buttons, the streamlines of workflow, it all just kind of really comes together in a great way for this kind of work. And I think the story here with the 22 is it just gets what it is right. A large drawing surface that is designed with artist ergonomics at the forefront, setting you up for very fast streamlines of workflow. And that's what this tool is all about. It's an excellent tool for the creative professional. It's an excellent large scale drawing tool. And it's something that I can highly recommend. It's my favorite Wacom product right now. And when you consider that Wacom's products are really high priced, this is one of their more affordable Cintiqs. And although it has some shortcomings, those shortcomings don't make enough impact in a negative way for them to stop you from considering buying this because the positives outweigh those factors. Now, there are some alternatives out there that have some better specs in some areas, but I think if you're considering an alternative or the Cintiq 22, you have to look at the Cintiq 22 from the big picture perspective and all that it offers. Having the etched glass, having one of the very best pen technologies out there, the ergonomics, your express key remote, the streamlined experience, and how most softwares are deeply set up for Wacom's technology. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like this video, it'd be great if you could share it with a friend, if you could give it a thumbs up, if you can drop a comment, but most of all, it would be best if you subscribe. Have a great day.